and welcome to another football video. Today we are going to be talking about England, the England national squad. Of course, there's been a couple of bits of news coming out over the last couple of days. One being the fact that our captain, Wayne Rooney, has retired from international football. Oh, it hurts. It does hurt me a little bit, but fine, fine. Great decision for him, I suppose, in terms of his Everton career. But yeah, we're going to talk a little talk a little bit about that. And then also we have the squad announcement for the, Euro, uh, the World Cup qualifiers against Malta and against Slovakia. Uh, so the squad's come out for that. So we're also going to... We're also going to have a little look and talk about that as well. So first of all, let's talk about Wayne Rooney. So he's retired. It came out yesterday, obviously, when he, he obviously had some sort of conversation with Gareth Southgate. He's decided to retire. Now, this personally was quite hard to take for me. I thought he had at least one more tournament with him. I think he's a great voice on the pitch, and I don't see too many more in England, in the England squad, sort of voices of that caliber. Uh, and he's a great captain. And also, just his versatility up front, his experience, you know, in games and stuff. I know he hasn't been great for the last couple of tournaments, but I think it's just a shame to see him go. And like I said, I think he had a couple more, maybe one or even two more tournaments in him to try and get glory with England, to really establish himself even more than he already has as an England and English legend, I suppose, and a football legend in general as well. Uh, so a real shame. Let me know down below what you think about this whole way Rooney retirement situation do you think it was too early do you think it was a good decision do you think we have enough in terms of leadership going forward in the squad you look at Henderson Cahill maybe but yeah it is what it is and we have to sort of take it as it is and respect this decision he's obviously gonna gonna have a good season with Everton it looks like this season I think it just keeps his fitness levels he's got a lot of miles on the clock so whatever see you later Wayne Rooney thanks for everything but I'm, I'm, I'm I think it was just a little bit premature maybe by a year or two even if he did just one more tournament but it is what it is but anyway, this, the squad has also been announced for the English World Cup qualifiers, the campaign against Malta and against Slovakia. So we have got this, the squad on the screen now. My first thoughts looking at this squad was one, we've got four keepers, right? Which I know we have quite a lot of good keepers to pick from, but it kind of shows that Gareth Southgate doesn't quite know his sort of best squad. And maybe he just believes in all these players and he wants to let them have a chance with an England jersey. You know, we've also got Fraser Forster that isn't even there. McCarthy, maybe you would say. But yeah, no Fraser Forster and four keepers. Crazy. We've got good keepers. And I think Joe Hart has, I don't know how he's earned himself a call up. I think it's just his England experience that's earned him that really. I, I don't mind him. I just think he hasn't been very good for quite a while now. I think Jack Butland's going to be our, our best keeper going forward. I think he's going to have two, three tournaments in him, definitely. And then you also look at the strikers. You look at the fact that we've got, is it sort of like five or six strikers? Strikers there. We've got Sturridge, Vardy, Welbeck, Kane, and Rashford there, along with wide players that are pretty much forwards like Sterling, Lingard, etc. But yeah, it's, it seems that he's really trying to give a lot of these players that have kind of been good over the last season or two a real chance. And Defoe as well. I, I forgot to mention Defoe. But yeah, all these players are going to get a chance to really fight for that jersey, it looks like. And also another impression that I've got is that our midfield is kind of, I wouldn't say weak, but we look like we're lacking a little bit in midfield. Now, if you look at Chalaba, for instance, who's got a call up. Well done. chaleb has got his first call up. Excellent stuff. He played for Chelsea last season. Now he's got a chance at Watford. So, you know, you know, fair play to him, but it does show that, you know, with, with a lack of sort of professional experience that Chalaba has, it shows how we're sort of lacking in that midfield, especially a sort of like box to box player. We obviously have injuries to Lalana and to Wiltshire, which has affected that. And obviously Wiltshire is sort of out of contention for his club and you don't know about his future, as well as Barkley. So they're three key sort of central midfield players be there attacking or box to box or whatever that we are missing in this particular squad. Chalabar obviously gets his chance to prove he's, he's starting for Watford this season as well. And also, if you have a look at the under 21 squad uh, who are going on their campaign for whatever, I think it's their Euros or their World Cup, I'm not, I can't quite remember. But a lot of the players in that squad look very, very promising as well. You've got Loftus Cheek. I don't know if we're going to go for four at the back or three at the back. Obviously, it's a new season, it's a new campaign. And, you know, maybe Southgate's going to be trying some fresh things. I don't know. He's obviously experimented with the three at the back. I don't know what he's going to do exactly, but if we go for a four at the back, I do believe this will be the squad right now on the screen. So we've got Bertrand left back, Walker right back. I've put Butland in goal because I think he's our best keeper, obviously. Had a couple of injury problems, played for Stoke towards the back end of last season and obviously as well played for Stoke at the beginning of this season and is looking like a very, very promising English keeper. I would say Cahill and Stones are going to be our first two choice centre-backs, although Jones has a shout. Obviously starting for Manchester United in the first two games. Obviously Keane has a shout. And even Maguire, congratulations to him as well for earning his first England call-up, has a shout as well. Dyer and Henderson, I would say, sitting in midfield. Maybe lacking a little 
little bit of creativity there. I would like to see maybe a Henderson and Lalana or a Dyer and Lalana or you know something like that with Ali just ahead at the head of that sort of uh, that three. And then I've put uh, Rashford on the left, Kane up front, and Oxlade Chamberlain on the right. I do believe Oxlade has that right wing position nailed down, whether it's right wing or right wing back, I don't know. But I think he has that that sort of wide right place nailed down. Now he's starting for Arsenal and everything. I think this is going to be Oxlade Chamberlain season for sure. And then I've just put Rashford on the left with Kane up front. That Rashford position could be any one of Rashford, Sterling, Welbeck, Lingard perhaps, I'm not sure. But if we go for a four at the back formation with a 4-3-3, I think that's what we will more or less play. Although the goalkeeper, I don't know if Southgate would agree with me that Butland's ready to be our number one yet, but I think he might experiment with the keepers a little bit because they're all very, very good. Uh, if we do go for a three at the back, I would hope that we go for a two up front rather than a three, uh, you know, two wingers and a striker because we've got so many good strikers at England and we need to have our formation, I think, where our strengths lie. And I think our strengths lie at the moment in having some very, very good strikers. Also, the amount of centre-backs that he's taken, I would say, suggest that we might go for a three at the back formation. We've obviously, at the moment, I've put Jones, Stones and Cahill as our first three, although Keane could be there in he ahead of Jones or Stones as that back three. And then as the wing backs, I've put Walker and Bertrand. You know, obviously Oxlade could do a job at right wing back. We've got Trippier in the squad. Aaron Cresswell, who I think Bertrand's ahead of him, but he could get a, a chance as well. I've put Dyer, Ali and Henderson in midfield again, and then Kane and Sturridge up front. Again, that Sturridge position could be any one of our strikers. Rashford, Vardy, you know, Welbeck, Defoe. It could be any one of those. Again, we, we could see that, you know, tweak slightly. We could see a two in the middle with three up front. We could see maybe like Ali and Henderson or Ali and Dyer or even Dyer and Henderson in, in the central positions there. I, I would imagine that maybe Southgate would put Livermore in there perhaps. I don't know. But we would then probably see the same front three as I predicted in the four formation, which was Kane, Rashford and Oxide chamberlain Again, the left wing could be any one of the players that we have at our dispense that can play on the left. Sterling, Welbeck, etc. So that's my take on the England squad. I think it's good to see, you know, quite a lot of strikers. I think, I mean, I'm quite interested to see what formation that Gareth Southgate is going to play. But other than that, make sure you leave your comments. Do you think I've got the, uh, the, the sort of tactic, the, the formation, I should say, right? Or do you think it's going to be something slightly different? Make sure you leave your predictions down below. Other than that, I'll see you tomorrow with another video. You can click on this one right here for some more football content. Other than that, thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, and I'll see you tomorrow and sweet.